eggs, as well as chocolate bars and candy corn. Today uh, we're celebrating Halloween uh, here at Copen Peace Park in Westlake. Uh, we are giving out uh, uh, candy, uh, food, and also like uh, some other resources to the community, especially to the kids. The families are gonna come in, they're gonna get the food, they're gonna get the kids are gonna get the candy, and then they're gonna exit. So it's basically a, a, a walkthrough. This year, because of the pandemic, uh, we are trying to uh, accommodate, you know, the, the families. It's still bringing some joy and still bringing some something that is festive to the community. Even though like uh, we're not gonna be able to do it as a festival like we usually do with games and entertainment, we still wanted to give something to the kids in today. And so that's what we thought about this walkthrough, uh, grab and go uh, for, for the kids so they can still have some sort of experience this Halloween. It's about 350 boxes of food. Each box comes with eggs, milks, and other um, groceries. And if we're hoping to um, have 350 families. Yo pienso que es una bendición de parte de Dios y de parte de las personas también de buen corazón que pues, está tratando de ayudar, de colaborar con las demás personas. Y pues sí, es, están haciendo una buena labor, ayudando a las demás personas. You don't have to look far to see fellow Angelinos enduring trying times. And enough can be said about the people, companies, and organizations that have come to the rescue these days. That's why folks from the helpful Honda team join forces with Tina's Pumpkin Patch in hopes of delivering a fun time for families in Sherman Oaks. Today we will be giving out free pumpkins to so SoCal Honda dealers. We're very excited to be here at Tina's Pumpkin Patch here in Sherman Oaks. And we're just going to help everybody celebrate Halloween. Because it's just a lot of people have been stuck inside. They haven't had a chance to go out. And you know, Halloween is still happening. We're still out here helping because it's our job to be helping. People are coming obviously to pick out pumpkins, but they're also bringing their children for some of our activities. Uh, we have a, uh, a train, we have a petting zoo, and we have pony rides. What was your favorite part? I think the petting zoo was fun, right? Yeah, the petting zoo. <laughs> they like uh, meeting the llama. Oh, and the little pig. Yeah, the yeah. little pig. And they got to ride on ponies. Mm -hmm. What else did you guys do? Oh, and the choo-choo train? Choo -choo. She rode on the train. Yeah. The SoCo Honda dealers, they just want to show that they're helpful with the community and everybody. So uh, that's why we go out and do our random acts of helpfulness. And people are still surprised, like you said. People are still surprised that we are very real. They think we're fake, that we're, we're just marketing. But we are actually out there helping people. And we're continuing to help people during this pandemic. Everybody has their own comfort level with regards to the pandemic. People want to have activities for their kids. And a lot of people are happy to see that we're here. And we have some things for the children to do and get out and experience Halloween in a safe way. Well, it's kind of kept us from doing things and experiencing things with my daughter. You know, kept special moments, but now little by little we're, we're doing things. We're trying to make the best of it, with, you know, covering ourselves yeah. with being safe, using our face masks, hand sanitizer, trying to stay, you know, six feet apart from people. So we're making the best of it. Yeah, and it's nice to have fun things like this to do. Well, we really appreciate people supporting us, and so we are always out in the community supporting them and being helpful. And no matter what, we are always going to continue to do our random acts of helpfulness throughout Soda California. Visiting the zoo has always been a great means of getting the family out of the house for semi-educational entertainment. And while we have seen the LA Zoo reopen to limited capacity, movie theaters are still shuttered until further notice. But fear not, movie buffs, because the folks over at the LA Zoo have found a way to bring back movie night, albeit under the stars. I'm really excited to watch a movie at the LA Zoo and to support LA Zoo and I'm so excited to watch Betty White in The Proposal.
It's a great new um, event that we're doing here to help continue to raise money for the zoo and provide a really fun experience for families. As soon as I heard about it, I wanted to do it and then I had an email, so I was like, okay, we're going. This is really fun. We were dying to get out of the house and do something fun and it reminds us of our childhood. The zoo was closed for a historic 166 days and we have reopened, but obviously during that time, we weren't raising the kind of money that we normally do when people come and visit the zoo. So um, this is just one of the ways that we're trying to supplement our gate attendance. And we're selling out, we're sold out tonight, we're sold out tomorrow night, so uh, buy tickets early if you wanna come. I think this is a great way to get out. You can go with the family and, and hang out, bring some food and snacks, and see one of your favorite movies on a big screen. It's, it's nice to get out and to see a movie, a fun movie, you know, and I, I used to go to the drive-in when I was a kid, so, you know, brings back that whole nostalgia, so. So we have implemented a remote uh, digital ordering. So you can place your order for your food on your phone through a text message or the website. And then when it's ready, you go pick it up and then take it back to your car and enjoy it in your car. And we have all of the county guidelines in place to ensure that people can have a safe experience. We're having a great time. We can't wait to uh, start the show. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs> The City of Los Angeles is posed to recognize Women's Entrepreneurship Day in November. Scheduled events and seminars have been moved online, but the event's primary themes of connection, strength, and collective power remain as its foundation. We are an incredible economic engine. But making sure that we create that access and opportunity for more women businesses is part of our mandate. Los Angeles has one of the most dynamic economies in the United States, and it's fitting that we declare November 19th Women's Entrepreneurship Day in the city of Los Angeles. In growing up myself and in uh, rising in, uh, in my professional journey, I rarely see examples, or I rarely saw examples of Filipina women in roles that I aspired to, uh, to have or to be. Because our culture is um, very much uh, rooted in uh, the export of labor from the Philippines. What that results in is a culture of of labor and, and working for others instead of controlling our own destiny. And uh, I think it's a missed opportunity. I think every personality is different. And um, for me, in terms of like, really just knowing my own strengths and knowing the way that I tick, um, because the way that other people get things done and the way they balance it could be totally different than the way it works for me. For so long, I was looking at myself through other lenses and I was comparing myself like apples to oranges and I felt inadequate and I didn't feel like I was, you know, good because I was using a certain set of metrics is different for everyone. Never let your dream die. No matter what the circumstances is in your life, going through divorce, going through trauma, going through a molestation, whatever the problem, whatever the circumstances may be, even in the midst of a pandemic, no matter what it is, don't second guess yourself. Just do it and it'll all pan out. Entrepreneurship is bigger than starting a business. It's about self-sovereignty, self-determination, and the liberation of even our, our community across the world. Councilmember Gail Cedillo takes his annual jazz festival online. Take a virtual tour of LA murals or check out the latest craze, laughter yoga. It's all up next on Virtual Things to Do. Councilmember Gil Cedillo's Latin Music and Jazz Festival is going virtual this year. Watch Cedillo's 7th Annual Latin Music and Jazz Festival for free on their custom broadcast page and social media platforms. 
Featured artists are Gilbert Castellanos, Latin Jazz Ensemble, and Mongo Rama by Jose Corizo. Festivities will include special promotions, photos, and other exclusive peeks into this amazing Latin Jazz music program and a live chat room. Join in on the fun with Cedillo's 7th Annual Latin Music and Jazz Festival, streaming from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch, simultaneously with gilcedillo.com forward slash live stream, Saturday, November 7th, beginning at 5 p.m. It's a virtual tour of some of the coolest walls in L.A. Join four prominent local Chicano artists, Judith Hernandez, Jose Lozano, Miguel Angel Reyes, and Barbara Carrasco, as they discuss the new murals adorning the new La Plaza Village mixed-use complex in downtown Los Angeles near the El Pueblo Historic District. The new murals adorn four structures in La Plaza Village. They're all located on Broadway between the Hollywood Freeway and Cesar Chavez Avenue. Jump online and take a tour of Los Angeles like you've never seen. La Plaza Village Mural Tours are available on the YouTube page for La Plaza de Cultura y Artes beginning November 7th. The LA Public Library wants to introduce you to Laughter Yoga. Laughter Yoga is a practice involving prolonged voluntary laughter. Laughter Yoga teaches practical ways to cope with everyday stresses and problems, all while having fun and burning some calories. And now is a great time to try it out for free. Join a class via Zoom for virtual laughter yoga with certified laughter yoga instructor, Barbara Molina. Enjoy the health benefits of laughter with this fun and relaxed weekly 30-minute class for all ages. Laughter Yoga is happening Mondays beginning at 4 p.m. To join in on the laughs, email emily at earonson at lapl.org. And that's a look at some virtual things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Natalia Bilbao. From all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week. There are things in every city that speaks to the heart and soul of every community. In San Francisco, it is the Golden Gate Bridge. In Chicago, it's the Beam. In New York, it is the Statue of Liberty. In South Los Angeles, it's the Watts Towers. Hi, my name is Rosie Lee Hooks. I'm director of the Watts Towers Art Center Campus. Come visit the Watts Towers Art Center campus where you'll see exhibitions, the Watts Towers of Simon Ordea, our garden studio with turtles and tortoises and California natives. This massive man-made sculpture is made of steel covered with mortar and embellished with mosaic tiles, glass, clay, shells, and rocks. The Watts Towers are truly unique and receive cultural heritage monument status from the city of Los Angeles in 1963. Like the community, the Watts Towers have a strong foundation and recycles different types of materials to create something breathtakingly beautiful. The Watts Towers Art Center is a guardian of the Watts Towers. It provides programs designed for cultural enrichment and museum and art education to the Los Angeles community and the world at large. With the recent adaption of the South Los Angeles and Southeast Los Angeles community plans, the Watts Towers Art Center community will continue to shine and serve as the pulse of the community.
Okay, good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Wednesday, November 4th. I'm Nuri Martinez, the President of the City Council. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, present. Bonin. Bonin, present. Buscaino. Here. I don't need to put the DJ. Sidio. Sidio, here. De Leon. Here. Harris Dawson absent. Corrects. Here. Krikorian. Here. Lee. Present. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Present. Rodriguez. Here. Rue. Present. Wesson absent. 13 members and a quorum, Madam President. Okay, first order of business. Approval of the minutes of October 28, 2020. Okay, Mr. Price moves and Mr. Lee seconds. Next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Mr. O'Farrell moves and Mr. Blumenfield seconds. Next. Madam President, would council like all items to go forthwith today? Without objection. That will be the order. Next. Items one through eight are items noticed for public hearing. Items nine through 42 are items for which public hearings have been held. Items 43 through 56 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 57 through 60 are closed session items considered by the Budget and Finance Committee. 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, those, uh, without objection, those items are now before us, members. Any of you wish to call any of these items specials? Mr. Buscaino? Thank you, Madam President, and good morning to you and our colleagues. I want to um, collect a call item 39 for an amendment. Would you like me to leave that into the record? Yes, please. Item 39, sir. Thank you so much. I'd like to direct the CLA. We've been very successful, by the way, with our dining platform program in downtown San Pedro. It should be a model citywide. Uh, just talk to our businesses and restaurants, talk to our San Pedro Chamber of Commerce, as well as our PBID in San Pedro. So I'd like to direct the CLA on this item. LADOT and the Bureau of Engineering, with the assistance of the Bureau of Street Services, the Department of Building and Safety and City Planning, the LA Fire Department, and other or any other departments as needed to closely examine and consider the San Pedro Outdoor Dining Pilot Program as a potential option when developing recommendations relative to the feasibility of creating a citywide permanent alfresco program. I'll second that. Thank you, Mr. Bonin. You're welcome. Okay, second by Mr. Bonin. Any others, Mr. Buscaino? Mm. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Bonin? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, good morning, colleagues. I'd like to call item 15 special for comments. And that'll be okay. all. Uh, okay, Madam Clerk, 15 for Mr. Bonin. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ma Madam President, there is also a request to hold item 14 for an amendment. Yes, and I'll be um, introducing that momentarily. Let me just finish going through the, um, the queue. Mr. Koretz? Thank you, Madam President. I'd just like to ask that we receive and file item 51 and 52 because they are no longer necessary. I'll second that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Koretz. Um, and it's been seconded, both items, Mr. Buscaino, 51 and 52? Yes, Madam President. Okay, Mr. Kikorian. Uh, thank you very much, Madam President. Um, I would like to call, um, one second, please. I'd like to call item 34 special for purposes of Amendment. Okay, go ahead and um, you want to read the moving clause? And if you need to make that motion now, um, I would move that we delete recommendation number two from this item and proceed as amended. Okay, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. O'Farrell. Any others, Mr. Krikorian? Uh, no, thank you. That'll hey, do it. Thank, thank you, Madam thank President. Thank you, Mr. O'Farrell. 
Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, there is a new restaurant in Atwater Village that has broad, widespread support from the community, the neighbor council, no opposition. Uh, and so therefore, regarding uh, item eight, I'd like to move to approve the application for determination of public convenience and necessity for this establishment. Okay, is there a second? I'll second, second. that. Thank you. Second by Mr. Buscaino. Any others, Mr. O'Farrell? Uh, that should do it, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, Madam Clerk, and if I can please um, make an amendment on item number four, which, I'm sorry, item number 14 on today's agenda. Council file 20-1318. Uh, be amended to delete recommendation one and replace it with the following. Instruct the city administrative officer and the chief legislative analyst to jointly report on strategy to extend project room key locations while ensuring that the extension counts towards the 6,700 bed city countywide agreement and include recommendations and eligible funding resources to serve all the local match to FEMA resources. Two, add a new recommendation as follows. Instruct the CAO and the CLA to coordinate with, the, um, with council offices regarding, regarding project room key to address any operational or security concerns that may arise. Second. Can I get a second? Second by Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you. Members, are there any other specials? Okay, Madam Clerk, what items um, are available to vote on this morning? Madam President, 9 through 13, 16 through 33, 35 through 38, 40 through 42, And uh, 57 through 60 are closed session items. However, uh, public hearing has been held in budget and finance. Okay, Mr. Gregorian, do you want to speak to items 57 through 60? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, all of these items uh, include recommendations of the city attorney regarding uh, our actions on routine settlements. Um, budget finance has considered all of them and uh, recommends approval of the recommendations unless members have questions or concerns that can be done in open session. All right, thank you, Mr. Kikorian. So, uh, Madam Clerk, those items are available to vote, is that correct? Uh, yes, uh, Madam President, if I may read the settlement amounts for the closed session. Item 57, in the case entitled Stewart Gidry versus City of Los Angeles, there's a recommendation to expend up to 495,000 in settlement. Item number 58, in the case entitled Gennaro Vasquez versus Los Angeles Metropolitan Transportation Authority et al., there is a recommendation to reject the plaintiff's offer of settlement. Item 59 in the case entitled Suzanne Olson versus City of Los Angeles et al. There is a recommendation to expend up to 150000 in settlement. And finally, item 60 in the case entitled Sylvia Mendez versus City of Los Angeles. There is a recommendation to expend up to 150000 in settlement. Thank you, Madam Clerk. There's been a request to continue item 16 for a week till November 10th. So without objection, that will be the order. So why don't you run through the uh, eligible items to vote this morning? Yes, that would be items nine through 13, 17 through 33, 35 through 38, 40 through 42, 57 through 60. All right, thank you, Madam Clerk. Go ahead and prepare to vote. Please call the roll. 
Bloomingfield. Bloomingfield Eye. Bonin. Bonin Eye. Buscaino. Eye. Sidio. Sidio Eye. De Leon. Eye. Harris Dawson Absent Correts. Eye. Kirk Corian. Eye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Weston absent. Thirteen ayes. These items are adopted. Okay, Madam Clerk, we're going to move on to public comment. So if you can please read the calling information for our callers and Mr. City Attorney, you can please explain our speaking rules. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Yes, Madam President. As indicated on the agenda, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press the pound key. Then press pound again when prompted for a participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Finally, when you hear the last four digits of your phone number being called out, press star six. Let me repeat, call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press the pound key. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. And finally, when you hear the last four digits of your phone number being called out, press star six. So, to members of the public, calling in when it's your turn to speak speak please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on you have one minute to per item to speak up to three minutes total and one minute from general public comment if you wish please start with the comment on the items before providing general public comment we'll tell you when your time's up when speaking on the agenda items you must be on topic our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can if you are not speaking on topic or if we can't tell whether you're speaking on topic you'll get one brief warning from me or the president if you do not immediately get clearly on topic or again stray off topic, the president will cut you off and you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. We're going to take 40 minutes total of public comment. The items that are open for public comment are items 1 through 8, 14, 34, 39, and 43 through 56. That is to repeat, 1 through 8, 14, 34, 39, and 43 through 56. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, you're live in the council meeting. When you hear the last digits of your phone, or other phone number or other identifying information, if you're on a block number, please call star, press star six immediately uh, to un unmute yourself. And if you're listening on another device, please turn down the volume on those devices immediately so we don't get feedback. And because there's a slight delay between the live meeting and the broadcast, it'll cause a lot of confusion if you continue to listen on your devices. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bonin? Uh, yeah, Madam President, um, I had called 15 special. I noticed the, uh, Mr. Staubel didn't uh, mention 15. I just wanted to know if that was... Uh, uh, so yeah, public comment has been satisfied oh, for 15. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's go ahead and take the first caller. Call in user one, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, um, my name is Kim. I'd like to speak on all available items in general public comment. Public comment, please begin. Thank you. Um, I definitely would support item 11 on uh, masks and businesses because those are very necessary. It's, uh, notices and um, there's very little protection for workers when it comes to regulating these things, so I need a little bit of help. 
on item 12 um so, so I don't speaker, understand. I'm really sorry to interrupt you speaker but we've already voted on items 11 12 you're perfectly free to talk about them in general public comment you if you want but you can't use up your three minutes on that would you like to take us take you to general public comment or do you want to move on to items well, that are open for public comment which ones are open again they are items one through seven 14 34 39 and 43 to 56. okay uh yeah i was completely muted before i got into this comment so um okay so i i will move into a uh, general public comment but um so okay thank you speaker i think that uh motions like number 12 uh are illustrative of how the city focuses on sidewalks as a comprehensive 80 like 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 when you talk about the ada you guys don't have a comprehensive strategy you just use that selectively uh to criminalize homelessness and so just things like that uh show that i mean al fresco there's no long-term plan for people outside living outside or al fresco for the winter you guys just don't know what you're doing and hate homeless people um they on there's items uh, reflect how Nikki Raman, who's won, is going to win, is right when she says you guys need to examine the budget fully to see how the work of the LAPD affects, um, like, like how effective they are in relation to crime rates and clearing rates of crimes getting solved. And uh, also just generally, um, Larry Martinez, working class people want you to want uh, you to stop using this as a prop to promote your shitty values because we actually care about other people. I don't want to perpetuate suffering on the streets by demonizing our neighbors just because we have a home. Stop governing like 10,000 people are needed to win because those days are over. You're Thank expressed, you, there to express the will of the people, not our, not be our bosses. It's not your fault. You're too power hungry to realize the difference. Caller with the phone number ending in 8178, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Sophie Strauss, and I'd like to speak on all available items in general public comment. So you have three minutes for the items open for public comment and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Sure. Hi, so first of all, item number 14 regarding Project Room Key. I think we all know this initiative was a tremendous failure due to our city's refusal to command your hotel rooms when it mattered. Now we're out of money because it's sitting in the pockets of law enforcement, and a program that could have been life-saving is wasting away. You guys have to do absolutely everything in your power to extend the disappointing remnants of this program as long as it's possible. It's literally the least you could do. Now moving on, special item 15, I'll fold this into general public comment. It's embarrassing how long this motion for something as basic as a report back on social housing has been floating around your desk. We saw how fast you guys can move when it comes to criminalizing poor and unhoused people with 4118. So why don't you bring that same enthusiasm to something that could actually address the housing crisis with, you know, actual housing instead of just trying to push through legislation that would make the housing crisis work. This doesn't even have a report back date. So you guys need to put a real timeline on this of 60 days so it can be heard when the council returns to holiday recess. And here's your first bit of information on this to report back on. The people support a vacancy tax and a flipping tax to fund social housing. And lastly, I hope you all paid very close attention to what happened in our city last night. Regardless of national politics, we are seeing resounding victories for our progressive people powered movement here in LA. The city rejected our cop loving DA and voted overwhelmingly to fund services instead of prisons. Herb Wesson, who isn't even here, your record spoke for itself last night and so did the 750K you accepted from police packs over the years. Los Angeles is rejecting cops and bootlickers alike, and it's looking highly likely that Nikki Raman will be joining your ranks shortly. Let David Reeves' lies and hypocrisy be a warning to all of you that Angelinos are sick of bullshit and we don't stand for it anymore. We want real change in this council, and we want you to stop violating the Brown Act and voting unanimously all the time like cowards. We want you to see that the fight for the good of the masses instead of fighting to line the pockets of your wealthiest donors is what we want. You may find us annoying, but if, it last, if last night taught us anything, you, it's that we are not dismissible. We are nearly, we got... Caller with the phone number ending in 1108, please press star six. Please state your name and the item uh, you'd like to speak on. Yeah, hi, uh, Daniel Gus, all items and general public comment. Sure, you have three, three minutes. Three minutes and one. Yes, thank you, Go Mr. Ahead. Gus. Go ahead. Yeah, three minutes and one for general. <clears throat> Council members, um, so Herb Wesson lost his race and he is essentially a lame duck, Mr. Rue lost his job and he is as well because and regarding all of the agenda items today 
I am imploring the current 13 council members, not including Mr. Wesson and not including Mr. Rue, pay very, very close attention to what Mr. Wesson promote in this and in the upcoming agendas because they are tied, specifically Mr. Wesson, to people who are either going to federal prison or who are under federal charges. And we know that that is not the end of the controversy involving some of these matters. So with today's agenda and everyone that's coming up while they're, they're still in office, pay close attention, protect the rest of Los Angeles from anything that Herb Wesson in particular and David Rue also is going to promote so, so or guess, vote on. I'm sorry to, uh, to yeah. interrupt, Mr. Gus. I think you're in general yeah. public comment or, or you want to go into well, the items? Let, let me let me try to be more precise so you understand where I'm going on that. Please. So we have various, and if it's still off, then I'll go on to general after that. But we have items from the committees that Mr. Wesson was on and Mr. Rue is on. And I am concerned that with them now having no job to lose, that they are free agents in a building that is saturated in corruption, controversy, and federal prosecutions. Prosecutors, that's essentially what I'm doing here. Pay very close attention because these items that you have today, budget and finance, public safety, where Mr. Rue and Mr. Weston participated, uh, uh, were saturated in, in, in this type of corruption. So pay close attention. I'll, um, I'll go, uh, I'll give back the, the one remaining minute of, um, of uh, items and I'll go to my general if that's okay. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, council members, at least kudos to Mr. Rue for showing up to work today. And Mr. Wesson, who's been in politics for more than two decades, didn't show up today. I hope that you folks learn a lesson that you can only lie to the public so much. Mr. Wesson's career is over. He'll have a nice pension, but he has left in disgrace running for county supervisor the same way his pal felon, Mitch Englander, came in fifth place out of six when running for county supervisor. If you lie on the job, you're going to get booted from the job. And David Rue losing the job as an incumbent to upstart Nithya Raman is extraordinary. He's only the third incumbent in the past several decades to lose his job as an incumbent, let alone to a newcomer. Congratulations to Ms. Raman um, and congratulations to, to, to Holly Mitchell for defeating two people that have harmed and abused the city of Los Angeles for far too long. Do a good job. You'll move up to the next level, council members. And if you don't, you'll see the same fate as Mr. Wesson and Mr. Rowe. Thank Thanks you, a lot. Mr. Thank you. Caller with a phone number ending in 5137, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Good morning, City Council. My name is Jamie Penn. I'm the resident representative for Wilshire Center Koreatown Neighborhood Council, Subdistrict so Three. Uh, I'd like to speak on. I'd like to speak on item 15, uh, but I will speak on item 14 in general public comment, please. Okay. So you have one minute for each. Please go ahead. All right. Uh, I'd just like to echo a previous caller um, on item 14. I believe her name is Sophie. Um, this project was just terribly executed. It was largely a performative project. It was not deployed nearly at all. Um, people deserve this project to be done right. Um, that's my entire comment on 14. I'd like to move on to my general public comment. Okay, please begin. So um, just to echo the previous callers, um, I do hope the members of this council were watching last night. Uh, it is a shame everyone isn't present today. Uh, though I really hope they were paying attention because last night it was proven that local politics willing to work with the people and not talk at them can succeed in a big way. It was proven you don't have to take corporate money to win and you don't have to declare yourself beholden to the Democratic Party. No matter who they think should win, we the people ultimately decide. And there are many new collaborations between organizations now, between tenant organizing, mutual aid, outreach. We have new official connections with labor unions. And believe me when I tell you those channels remain open. And in my opinion, we're fully capable of supporting a general strike here locally. 
And only time will tell what's to come, but it is abundantly clear that neoliberal politics, which blindly yield to the whims of corporate interests and ones that ignore the will of the people and refuse to champion our demands, are not succeeding. We demand a local government Thank that you, works Speaker. for all of us, not just the wealthy few. Thank you for your time. Have a good day. Caller with the phone number ending in 1721, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Sachin and I'll just do a general public comment. Um, so I just wanna say that I support item 15, it's a good start and I hope it passes, um, but more importantly, I hope the action is taken afterwards so we can create this uh, desperately, need, uh, desperately needed housing. Um, and then very quickly, I wanna say this, DM Correct last week uh, at the last week's meeting, you uh, suggested that you would uh, be open to having advocates come to the table to help develop homelessness policy, and I really hope that you'll follow through on something like that. Um, there are a lot of incredible orgs and advocates that do so much important work across the city, and I think that we would all benefit from coming to the table and talking about solutions together. Um, so please follow through on that. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 7719, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Thank you. It's Eric Previn, and I'd like to speak on the agenda items as well as uh, general public comment. You have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin, Mr. Previn. Thank you, Mr. Fogel. Um, first of all, I'd like to speak about the public hearing item for the wine and eggs uh, program that O'Farrell is trying to get going with a lot of support. This is because people have started to enjoy a cocktail with their breakfast in Los Angeles, given the stress of COVID and other things. So here, the public interest and necessity is being served. Uh, I agree with O'Farrell in a rare twist uh, by providing, as I say, wine and eggs together. And Buscaino quickly uh, appreciated that himself. I'm not sure I agree with uh, the 100% 24-7 al fresco dining program without some accommodation so that people could get by. I do like the idea, frankly, and I don't like the idea of over-regulating and frustrating businesses who are trying to climb back uh, after this, uh, this tough time. Now, uh, meanwhile, you have Martinez, the great leader uh, having a look at the Project Room Key extension program. Well, certainly it was a good idea to put people up and off the street and into local hotels, but the idea of continuing to pay local hotels huge sums uh, for this kind of thing does not feel like a long-term solution. And whereas it is a great way to reconnect the TOT love that has been uh, you know, underlying the graft, corruption, and greed at City Hall for many, many years by waiving the transit occupancy taxes, the mayor can affect the kind of bested contributions that make him feel so good. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think Project Room Key uh, needs to be replaced with a really good plan to help people. Someone talked, I think the planning has an item about, you know, what can we do? What are the ways that we can provide social housing, meaning housing that is not impossibly unaffordable the answer is uh in that item number 20 whatever it was or 30 but uh de leon has item 54 today here's a new guy uh certainly burst in the back room but nonetheless here's a guy who wants the broadway money to finally be released seven million will come out the door to to you know spruce around his neighborhood so let's watch closely as they've all been waiting for this money uh as it was tied up because of the fbi indictment of Weezar and englander and you know, I think people are wondering, what was the $495,000 settlement to the whistleblower at item 57 all about? And, you know, why does the city not disclose that? And so, the other item so for Mr. the legal Preben, settlement- So Mr. 57 was already voted on. You're, ha you're free to talk about it in general public comment, though. Would you like to go to general public comment? Oh, that's funny. So you're suggesting as the lawyer, no talking about the legal items because you already voted on them? Y yes, you are talking about the item oh, we already okay. voted on. I just on. wanted to get that on the record, thanks. Yeah, no, how much time is left? Uh, three seconds before you go to general. All right, well, then let's just go right to general on okay. point. 
At item number 58, which was a legal settlement, that you rejected the settlement, I think the public, when we reject a settlement, would like to know what's being rejected. I don't think that they submitted it to the city attorney and Krikorian in secrecy. I think they want to know that you owe us a lot of money because our guy fell on your street or whatever the reason. So, again, it gets to the simple um, space of open government. Why in the world you go into the back room, which you don't even do because Krikorian is so deft at moving the claims board meeting around. I want you to know that it's tomorrow at 3 p.m. or something strange where it never is. He's, he put it on with 30 items and then immediately uh, canceled it and then confused everybody. I don't know. I think we need to be more transparent and then we can clean up some of the mess. So, Fauble, uh, my God, uh, it must be very difficult presiding over such a cesspool. But good luck, and we did get Rue out, so that's something. Okay. MRT will follow shortly thereafter. This will be short. He'll go to work for Newsom as one of the top FAs once he realizes that he'll never become mayor. So thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 0899, please press star six. Please state your name and the Hi. item you'd like to speak on. This is Stacey Dawson Stearns, and I don't want to waste time today, so I'm just going to use my one minute of public comment. Okay, please go ahead. I'd like, okay, I'd like to call out last week's shit show on 4118. Thanks for making everybody wait for hours and hours so that you could put us off, not let us in, and then all of a sudden, miraculously, all of Buscano and Price's babies show up for the comment period. That was the most rigged thing I have ever seen in my life. Not to mention that this guy is also rigging the, uh, the um, police commission meetings. We know, we know so well. And what I'm really looking forward to now that we've got some new movement here is this council stopping being such fucking cowards in the face of the police department. This guy, your days are numbered. You can't be advocating for your bros anymore. We're coming for all of you. We're coming for you now. And I want to see some council members before you lose your job. Show some spines. We're talking to you, Harris Dawson. We know you're not there, but we know you're going to hear us anyway. You are, you, are, you are totally complicit in all the bullshit that LAPD is doing until you stand up and talk out loud. Rodriguez, I'm talking to you as well. I yield my time and fuck you, but welcome, Nisya. Can't wait to see you. Thank you. Next caller. Caller with the phone number ending in 5436. Please press star six. Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Which items would you like okay. to speak on? Uh, item 15 and general public comment. Um, so 15 is not actually open for general or open for public comment, but you can talk about it in general. So should we just give you a minute? Sure, that's fine. Thank you. Um, I'd like to reiterate what Sophie Strauss said earlier. Uh, item 15 is really, really important. Um, Obviously, your housing policies have been a complete disaster and failure, and this is a good idea, but you need a report pack date so this doesn't get stuck in limbo like all the other performative motions you guys put forward. Moving on, uh, I'd just like to say how awesomely exciting it was that Nithya is booting Ryu, um, and I hope it is a huge wake-up call to the rest of you, especially uh, sociopaths like Joe Buscaino, Joey Buckets, who likes to slobber and, and froth at the mouth at the very idea of getting to punish homeless people. And uh, to uh, Stafford B, of course, I mean, you're on borrowed time. You're, you're a complete and utter clown. And MHD, um, we all saw those screenshots this week of you just getting completely owned by Chief Chief Moore, uh, so you're on the list too. Thank you. And um, yeah. Caller with the phone number ending in four two zero eight. Please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hey, yeah, uh, that was funny. Uh, this is Rob Kwan. I'd like to speak on items forty eight and general public comment. Sure, you have a minute for each. Please go ahead, Rob. Thank you, and I, I just want to quickly note that um, for those calling in, uh, we couldn't hear any of the discussion prior to public comment or any of the public comment instructions on what items you can speak on, et cetera. Uh, so I just wanted to flag that. Uh, I'm sure that's in response to Mr. Spindler, but um, let's get it right. 
Uh, Friday 48, uh, NASA and, uh, you know, predicting what we breathe project. I think that's, you know, common sense considering our recent gas leak in the valley and the fact that NASA was more straightforward and, and uh, upfront with us than the DWP. Uh, our council president likes to talk about frontline communities and CD6. Um, but, you know, what kind of oversight do we have here? The petroleum administrator position has been vacant for a freaking year. Uh, that's led to a halt in hiring for other positions in that office. Garcetti wasted about nine months looking internally when everybody knows we need to look for expertise outside of the city of L.A. He got three fucking applications. Uh, the best case scenario now that they've actually opened things up is that they'll maybe hire somebody in January. Um, slow walking this position only exacerbates that oil setback, but maybe that's what our council president wants. Who knows? Um, for my general public comment, you know, I, I want to thank council member Bonham, uh, for item 15, uh, realizing that social housing is the only way we can get out of this thing. And it's kind of sad that it's, you know, taken this long, but, um, moving on, I, I want to talk about last week's vote. Uh, the most fascinating one I've seen this few years. Um, council president Martinez was pretty livid, but you have no one to blame but yourself. You had nine votes a week before, uh, and then you ended up with like six. Uh, you tried to Herb West in the thing, but it's pretty clear you're not Herb West. And whatever I might, I might think of him, uh, he knows how to count his votes. He knows how to keep his votes while also reading a room and feeling out what he has to do to get things done. He's infinitely more skilled. How is it that an ordinance came back beyond Bob Blumenfield's recognition? The city attorney either went road or the council president was the one guiding and drafting the ordinance while the mover was kept in the dark. That resulted in even greater backlash as he we had this dramatic draconian ordinance, even worse than the one before, and it led to backlash against everybody in the horseshoe. There was no commu uh, committee hearing. We had two days' notice on the ordinance. For those around the horseshoe, she didn't just keep us in the dark. She kept you in the dark. Thank you, Mr. Kwan. Herb would have never forced his colleagues to vote a week before an election. This broken process produced... Caller with the phone number ending in 6999. Please press star 6. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Please state your name and the items you'd like to speak on. My name is Nancy Hanna, and I would like to speak on uh, item 16, although I believe that's general comment. Yes, correct. So you have a minute. Please go ahead. All right. Good morning, council members. My name is Nancy Hanna. I'm calling on behalf of the Better Neighbors LA Coalition, and uh, we support this per night fee as necessary for a sustainable home sharing ordinance. However, the staff report indicates there will be a remaining shortfall because the host registration fees are set too low. We don't think Angelinos should be subsidizing this industry by half a million dollars a year, and we encourage you to update the registration fees to eliminate this taxpayer subsidy. More concerning than the ongoing financial costs is ongoing illegal commercial activity. City planning staff have reported thousands of violations but have only issued a few hundred citations and have conducted zero investigations. Today's staff memo suggests the number of illegal listings may exceed the number of legal listings. Tents, trailers, and other categorically ineligible units have got, somehow gotten registered under the HSO. We still have a lot of work to achieve the promise of the HSO. And the recent New York Times coverage shows even Airbnb is having a hard time bringing the industry's party houses under control. Land use problems are becoming uh, public health Thank problems. You, and the passage of the HSO was a great first step, um, but we need to do more to encourage enforcement. Thanks, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 1143. Please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. My name is Faith Myra, and I'd like to speak on general comment. Please go ahead. You have a minute. Thank you, President, um, Council M President uh, Martinez, for her motion calling for a sunset date to the gas operations at the Valley Generating Station. No community in Los Angeles deserves to have a gas facility in their backyard. I live in Mara Vista near Playa del Rey Gas Storage Facility. The California Council on Science and Technology has singled the Playa facility out as having relatively higher risk to health and safety than the other facilities in California. This dangerous facility threatens the health, my health and the safety of 
me and the people that I love. And I urge the council to agendize the resolution put forward by council members Bonin and Lee calling on the state to create real plans for closing gas storage facilities in LA. And I'd like to point out that um, thank you, Holly Mitchell and Nithya Ramon for supporting our communities in this fight and let them be an example. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending in 0914, please press star six. Caller with the phone number ending in 0914, please press star six. Please state your name and the item Hi. you'd like to speak on. Hi, yeah, my name is Caleb Crowder. I'm gonna speak on items 14, 40, and general public comment. So you, you have um, you have one minute for the item. The second item actually we've already voted on, so it's general. So you have two minutes. Please go ahead. Okay, great. Item 14. Um, yes, of course we need to be expanding Project Home Key sites. There are wholly inadequate amount of them. We know that. That's why we were so upset in the previous weeks when we've seen further pushes to criminalize folks and we have not nearly enough beds to be actually housing people. Yes, you need to expand it. You need to be commandeering each and every vacant room that you have possible. We have an unbelievable crisis on our hands. So I would recommend that you please approach this with expediency. That's all I'm really gonna say about that. I think I'm gonna move on to general public comment. Item number 15, this is amazing. I would like to highlight the fact that this motion is arriving in front of this council because of the decades of work of black and brown and queer and immigrant and disabled folks all across this country who have had enough with housing injustice. We, housing being commodified ends up having the exact type of homelessness and housing crisis that we see in cities like ours all across the country. This is an unbelievable moment. You need to bring impacted folks to the table to tell you how to implement this. Thank you, Mike Bonin, for championing this. Homes guarantee people's action. This is the work that we have been working on. I'm glad to see it here. Let's make this come to fruition. Thank you, that is it. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 7006, please press star six. Please state your name and the item please you'd like to speak on. All items, general public comment. You have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Thank you. Number one, to the defeated Herb Lesson, vote no on number one. That little greasy, oily haired little spook. It doesn't deserve our consideration. He's a loser. And he did it without an attorney. That's right. No attorney would ever put together something this illegal. Fuck you. Now we get to item 15. Like Bonin. You're crazy. You're doing a good job. So, so Mr. Speaker, you don't want to do a item good 15 job. is not open for, for public comment on the item. You can go to your general public comment. Oh, okay. Comment. Because you, you let the other fellow speak up. Yeah, you were letting the other guy speak up. Okay. It's, 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 it's hard to know what, what you vote on. Continuing with the rampage through the rampageous agenda. No on item 97. No on item 81. So, Mr. Spindler, there are no such items. Please speak to the agenda items now or we're going to cut you off. Oh, I don't want to be cut off. No, how about general public comment? Okay, you have one minute. Please begin. I fuck you, huh? I know you're out there, you greasy little fuck. Tried to blackmail me for 118000 with that detective Eric Reed. We're coming for you, man. FBI's coming for you. They're coming for you too, Eric. You, you and that little March 30th, 2017 attempted assassination. 
They're investigating it. They're Holly Mitchell. He fucked you. I told you we fuck you. I kept my word. I kept my word. Congratulations to George Gascon. Kicking Jackie Lacey, sorry, black ass out of that chair. She's as white as paste. All she had to do was drop my charge back in June 2016, but she hung me out of the rail. So I brought George Gascon down here to kick her ass. But let's talk about David Rue. I will not concede Thank you, that Mr. way. Your time's up. Nip. Caller with the phone number ending in. Five one one three. Please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Uh, Heather Carson, general public comment. Yes, you have a minute. Please begin. Thank you. I'm speaking as a co-founder of HomeShare Alliance Los Angeles. The two ninety three per night fee doesn't sound like a lot, but if booked year round, that's an additional ten sixty five on top of the eight fifty. Someone charging 30 a night would pay a 17.5% tax, whereas someone charging 300 a night would pay 1.75%. That's not equitable. In any case, this is not a time to be raising fees. Paula asks that you delay this decision until the emergency order lifts and actual data can be analyzed instead of projected. Instead, please focus on enacting the RSO owner-occupied amendment, which you voted on exactly one year ago today and have been stuck with planning ever since. Yet planning has made the time to ask for 3.9 million, including 1.65 million, towards only 14 planning salaries, whereas this amendment would help over 5,000 Angelinos and bring in 14% income to the city. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 1148, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. I would like to speak on all available items and general public comment, please. Yes, so you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please start with the items. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, uh, uh, you owe Miss Autry an apology, Miss Martinez. Do it. Apologize. For Corian, we're not saying you do nothing. We're saying you do next to nothing, and what you do is wrong. Another day of vote trading, 100% yes votes on all items, as usual, just like the previous caller said. This is a criminal kindergarten way to run a city. And that's why we're a big homeless encampment. Item number eight, Farrell, you anorexic little weasel, you disgust me. This is not a vote on this restaurant for public convenience. You left out for the sale of alcoholic beverages. Just more criminality, your career criminals. Why don't you just tell the truth for a change? King of homelessness, criminally insane, corrupt Herb Wesson is gone. You can take this council to another degree, Ms. So, Martinez, speaker, or you can you, wallow in the same gutter so, trash. So I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could you get onto the agenda items, please? I'm just talking about number eight, sir, but I'll get on with another item, if you like, number 14. Yes, project, like the other callers have said, Project Room Key is a disaster. Mike Bonin's motion to tax the vacant units was watered down by Weston and the rest of you criminals in bed with all the big developers, so he had to drop the motion altogether. Item number 44, Dawson criminal is uh, apparently consoling Weston. They're both out today. Item number 44, $22 million in bonds for 6501 Crenshaw Boulevard. They don't even have the decency to say how many units there are to this thing. Lowering the $9 million in interest from 3% to 1%, more bootlicking to, to developers, criminal activity, vote trading. Look up vote trading, comma, Los Angeles City Council public. Google it. This is 
kindergarten, kindergarten way to run a city. Number 19, LAPD contract for security. What is number 20, DNA enhancement grant? What are we doing? This is criminality beyond belief. Good riddance to Rue, good riddance to Wesson. The rest of you people need to look at these, look at these items, so look at the your, way you do business and you, stop it. You're on your general public comment now, Speaker. Okay, thank you. Why do I always demand that Martinez apologize to Ms. Autry? The very last official act of Herb Wesson, criminal, cr criminally corrupt, insane, Herb Wesson was to throw Miss Autry, a 99-pound little black woman, out into the street. Why? So he could stand there for the next hour and a half praising himself. And Martinez, you turned around, stuck your neck out, and waved to her with your fingers. Disrespect to my community, to her, yourself. You need to apologize to her. Set the universe straight, or you can wallow in Herb Wesson's gutter and keep the city in a homeless state of, of, of homelessness. We want our city back, and we're going to recall Marquise Dawson. Thank you, Speaker. We're Caller with the phone number ending in 1047, please press star six. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Good morning. It's uh, Sylvester Annie with the Love We Don't See. I'd like to speak on item 1415 and general public comment. So 15 is not open for item comment, but you could have a minute on item 14 and then a minute in general public comment, Speaker. Please begin. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, well, with, with 14, obviously, as, as the college has previously stated before, it has been largely performative. We still have too many of our houseless uh, brothers, sisters, and non-binary folks in the streets right now, and it's completely unacceptable under any condition, and especially during a pandemic. The thing is, when it comes to housing our family members, and that's how we have to look at them, as, as our family members, I want you all to look at them as your family members, because we're all part of one city, we all should be a part of one people. This is the bare minimum that we can do for these people. And the lack of compassion and the fact that we've waited all this time to just do what's right is going to reflect poorly when we look back on how things are run during this time. I'm going to shift over to my general public comment. And with my general public comment, I want everybody, I hope everybody took a look at what happened last night. We want you all to struggle with us. And not struggle with us in the sense of struggling just to struggle, but struggle with us in the sense of working together and building coalitions with people in hopes of a better future than that we've known before. That's all we want. Last week I saw a video, or, or earlier this week I saw a video of, of David, and, and he was just being asked a simple question, you know, by constituents. Couldn't even answer the question. You know, that's a politician. We don't want politicians. We want people. And the thing is, if you don't support people-led movement, you don't struggle with us, then what's going to end up happening is the people are the people are going to rise up and you're going to be out of a job. That's it. Shout out to Nithia. I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I hope you guys welcome her with welcome arms. But we need to protect our houses, brothers, sisters, and non-binary folks. That's a must. That's necessary. That's our family. And Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the phone number ending in 5245, please press star 6. Caller with the phone number ending in 5245, please press star 6. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Jones, and I want to speak on general public comment. 
you have a minute, speaker. It's difficult to hear you. I want to add, add my voice and the voice of the organizations that I belong to and head to the recall of Marquise Harris Dawson. We finally got rid of the guy that one caller always refers to as the king of homelessness, her voice. And it appears Jackie Lacey is gone also. Now we're going to cleanse the black community of Marquise Harris Dawson, the gentrifier in chief. Dawson is trying to evict the poor residents of a rent control unit, Northhead Village, with 206 apartment buildings at Crawford and Crenshaw, so that his billionaire buddy, Jeff Green, can build a luxury apartment. We will not tolerate this barbaric act. We, the people, are sick and tired of black people that are elected, like Marquise Harris Dawson, flipping and selling out our black community for his own personal gain. We must recall Marquise Harris Dawson. That concludes public comment. Members, we're going to vote on the following items. Uh, Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and vote on item 1 through 8, 43 through 50, and 53 through 56. Madam Clerk, please prepare. Please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Cedillo. Uh, Cedillo, aye, thank you. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson absent, correct? Aye. Krikorian. Council Member Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Going back to Council Member Buscaino. Mr. Buscaino, can you hear us? Yes. Is that an aye? Aye. Thank Sorry. You. 13 ayes. These items are adopted. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and vote on the following items as amended. Item 14, 34, 39, 51, and 52. Please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cidio. Cidio, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson absent, correct? Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. 13 ayes. These items are adopted as amended. Okay, let's move on to item 15. This was called special by Mr. Bonin. Uh, thank you, Madam President, uh, and thank you, colleagues. Uh, today, what we have before us is, is a motion asking the city uh, to begin to look into and explore um, whether or not it would be appropriate, uh, which I think it would be, to do social housing here in Los Angeles to accommodate the incredible need for affordable housing. Uh, what is social housing? It's a term uh, a lot of folks are not uh, familiar with uh, yet. Um, it is uh, a form, frankly, of, of public housing, uh, done much better than the United States has traditionally uh, done it. Um, 
we have uh, here in Los Angeles County, by, by most estimates, a shortage of at least half a million units of affordable housing to meet the existing demand from low income renters. That's probably a low ball estimate and the demand certainly as we are seeing uh, is increasing. And we, we're never going to meet that demand if we rely solely on trying to coax the, 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 the private sector into building affordable housing through you know, tax credits or subsidies or, or zoning incentives or relying on giving a small percentage of extremely low income renters a housing voucher. Um, social housing is typically rental housing provided at below market rents, um, usually based on uh, income based formulas permanently off the, the private market. Sometimes it's owned and operated by a munis municipal government uh, or by a nonprofit housing provider or by land trusts. Uh, sometimes residents own a stake in their own homes at subsidized rates, but they cannot sell them for exorbitant uh, profit. Uh, think about this as a public option for housing. Uh, just like we have a, a, a healthcare system that is really an expensive band-aid over a gaping hole and we need a public sector alternative. The same is true of, of, of housing. Uh, around the world, uh, more and more uh, parts of the world are, are starting to uh, use public housing, it has uh, social housing. It has been done for a very long time uh, in uh, Vienna where uh, three in five residents live in, in social housing. Uh, and the threshold for eligibility of it is about twice the average of annual income. This is just not low income housing. This is mixed income housing. It's also workforce housing. Uh, and one of the reasons this differs so much from the US relatively failed experiment in public housing is that it's done right. Uh, it is a different mix of incomes uh, so that uh, the public has more buy-in in its success. Um, uh, there is real uh, a sense of ownership among people who live there. It is done generally with uh, public amenities in mind, uh, close to, to shopping and to parks and to public transit. Uh, and uh, it's been uh, very well done in other places like Finland and Sweden, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore. Uh, Scotland is now moving towards it. New Zealand is moving towards it. Uh, and uh, it's something that I think is, is worth us exploring here in, in Los Angeles. So what this motion seeks to do is, is a couple different things. It asks the, the CLA and HCID uh, to actually talk to people who are familiar with social housing, researchers, experts, uh, affordable housing activists, and prepare a report for us on the types of social housing and the different models of social housing uh, used in other places uh, and make recommendations for applicability here in Los Angeles. The other thing it does is it asks the city departments to report back on how many additional units of public housing are right now allowed per council district under the voter approved limits of 3,500 units per council district from several years ago. Uh, and to tell us what the steps are necessary to allow for additional construction above that, what legislative or statutory changes would be needed uh, to be made. Um, and then it also asks the CLA and CAO to let us know what some potential funding sources uh, could be. There's a variety of different funding sources used in different areas. Um, and the things I, I asked them to look at specifically are, are state and federal funds, uh, whether or not there are any new revenue sources, uh, such as a, a flipping tax or an out-of-state transaction tax that could perhaps help fund it. Uh, the potential use of a newly created public bank, now that those are on the horizon here uh, in Los Angeles, thanks to our state legislature, uh, and um, whether or not there's a potential for the city to recoup some costs on the back end by, by renting or leasing units established by the city. And the last thing it does is it asks CLA, CAO, and asset management to uh, let us know if there are any city properties in Los Angeles that would be ripe for uh, at least a demonstration project of social housing. So um, it's a big thing to do. It's a different way of looking at the, the need for providing for affordable housing uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and um, the crisis is so big and so bad that we really do need to begin to, to be thinking outside the box in the usual way of doing things because it's a, a, uh, it's a system that is not providing the inventory we need and the housing that Angelinos need. So I ask for an I vote. Thank you. Mr. Cedillo?
Madam Chair, I want to speak uh, in favor of the, uh, the motion. We've had this discussion in committee, and um, you know, my understanding at this point is that there's no prohibition for us to do all the things that have been articulated. And in fact, in our office, we are taking initiative to do the very things that are, are noted. Um, I don't think I need a report from the CAO or the CLA, CLA to tell me I, what I can do or not do with these uh, various elements, but there is a, uh, to the extent that we can build a consensus uh, around uh, these approaches and take these kind of, uh, on an international level, kind of these boutique samples and then turn them into uh, real uh, pilots within our district, I think all of us should open ourselves up to that. You know, today's a new day. We're going to win an election. We're going to be able to turn the direction of our country back uh, on the right track. And we should think about this in terms of the planning. I think one of the biggest uh, challenges for us, of course, uh, is going to be the question of funding. And then, of course, the question of you know, public-private partnerships and to the extent uh, we take advantage of that. Uh, we don't have an experience of building uh, much, but we uh, can figure out what is the appropriate balance in terms of public-private partnerships uh, for us to do that. You know, in thinking about this, there were, Madam Chair, remember when I first came to the council, the various things that, I, that we had talked about, the things that we can do, we need to rethink uh, all these things. We had a House LA initiative, and I want, uh, as this goes forward, for us to think about these other things, I want in the CLA and the CAO's report back to give us uh, some thoughts on questions like site plan review modifications. So for example, this social housing, we should expedite it as much as we can. Uh, and yet we have, we're encumbered by uh, the number 50, 50 units in terms of residential units in terms of site plan review modifications. We should look to make that bigger because I think uh, Council Member Bonin is thinking uh, of much bigger projects uh, done in ways that are elegant. I, I've seen these in like Hamburg, Germany, and that's a, a template that I look at, but I've seen it in Mexico City as well. And so um, we should look at, at that site plan review modifications. I think Micro units are going to be part of this conversation and part of this discussion, and so I'd like the CAO and the CLA to think about that. Uh, taking the model from the Greater Downtown Housing uh, Incentive Ordinance, and look at how we do this throughout the city, because as we move forward, that's going to have to be something that we look at. Not one size fits all, uh, I think, in this model, and so we have to think about uh, the diversity in terms of uh, how we house people. Uh, cost is going to be a factor. Uh, the environment is going to be a factor. We have to, you know, look at those again in terms of shared vehicles and how, how we, uh, what our regs are in terms of development. Uh, and then, of course, we have um, this question of city-owned land, and we have to go beyond that. But given the growing diversity of our staff uh, or of our council, we should look at uh, city-owned land state-owned land, county-owned land, uh, help me here, Mr. O'Farrell, uh, some districts-owned land, um, a whole range so that we can begin to find the properties uh, in our city that would be usable and available for us for the development of these projects. So it's a very um, exciting initiative. Uh, I think we need to really flesh it out. Uh, and we need to think that today's a new day, uh, hopefully, I don't know what it's going to look like. Maybe Mr. De Leon can tell us what the Senate will look like, look like uh, when we get back. But we're going to need Washington to step up and do its job. And we're going to have to have the resources coming from Washington. Our country has been hurting. Uh, we've chosen a new direction, and we need to think about that. But in doing so, we need to have these initiatives ready so that we can uh, move forward in terms of uh, addressing the concerns all the residents of the people of Los Angeles. So I speak uh, in favor of this initiative. Mr. O'Farrell. Thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Mr. O'Farrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cedillo. Thank you, Mr. Bonnet, for introducing this very uh, important new tool, or, or really it elevates um, uh, 
a bit of a, uh, a, a collection of an a, a amalgamation of various ways that we have in the past and are currently funding um, either a permanent supportive housing or affordable housing outside of the measure HHH arena at times. What, what this does though, it's, it's really wonderful because you're elevating this as yet another essential tool in the whole spectrum of ways forward on handling uh, and addressing directly what, what you very aptly described as uh, conveyed as just this overwhelming need that I would argue is the number one concern pre-COVID, during COVID and post-COVID this humanitarian crisis that, that we all face. Um, it it uh, is a way to formalize this as an approach to add officially to, uh, like, I, like I said, uh, the, the, the full menu of options that we have on getting people housed um, more quickly. Um, and this option also uh, can include purchasing buildings that uh, are existing uh, where there's rent control and long-term residence. Collectively, we have railed against tenants in common, which does just the opposite. And that is a big gigantic loophole in the state law that allows rent stabilized buildings to be purchased by, um, uh, by uh, LLCs, uh, what, is the, what is the term, uh, LLCs, mm -hmm. and legally allows LLCs to evict long-term rent controlled tenants and then transform it into individually uh, and collectively owned condominiums, which is a real scourge on the city and has, has resulted in uh, homelessness and, uh, and widespread displacement in the city of LA. Um, and so we need all the tools we can get. And we need to elevate this as a conversation on keeping people who are at risk, uh, the most vulnerable of becoming displaced um, and then, you know, putting into the hopper uh, on funding. Uh, and lastly, I'll say this, Mr. Bonin, and that is collectively, colleagues, we have been working on making sure that the considerable resources that we have been fighting for for years and years, and we'll continue fighting for in terms of resources to address homelessness and uh, build more covenanted affordable housing uh, in a way where we can put those incoming resources now and into the future to much better use so that a funding stream can go toward um, social housing. Uh, and so really this is, is a, a welcome ingredient uh, to that conversation where we can ex expeditiously, expediently, uh, and, and very, very um, uh, in, in a fiduciary uh, responsible way make sure that every penny for affordable and supportive housing goes to where it's needed the most. And we need places for people to sleep warm and safe indoors. Uh, and, and that remains to be my number one focus. And it's gonna take the entire spectrum of options, uh, temporary, uh, semi-permanent, and most importantly, permanent. So people have a home uh, in which to live indefinitely. Uh, and so I wholeheartedly support this and I look forward to um, helping elevate this as one of the options moving forward. Thank you. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Bonner, for putting uh, this, this uh, motion forward. Uh, I'm happy to speak on it. Um, you know, housing instability, housing ability has no, has no borders. Something I elevated the discussion as the president of the National League of Cities in this country, but uh, we ought to look at models around the world, models that work. Um, but I, I do agree with Mr. Cedillo that um, we do have models that work in the city of Los Angeles. So I want to warn this body and city family, the whole notion of, of, of paralysis by analysis and as it relates to housing. We know I'm, I'm proud to have the largest number of public housing units uh, in the city of Los Angeles. The turnaround, what we've seen in Jordan Downs, um, with that placement, um, what we've, um, the housing development in the Wilmington area, um, and also want to point out the Normont Terrace project, uh, now called Harbor Village, where it is a mixed income community 
surrounded by amenities and jobs and public transportation, yet another model to follow. Um, so um, I would um, also encourage as we move forward uh, in looking at uh, working with, um, with our federal partners in HUD, hoping we do see a change in the HUD administration that will deliver uh, more vouchers and Section 8 vouchers rather for our city and cities across the country, that we look at pathway towards home ownership as well. Uh, um, uh, we look at uh, models that do work and um, moving forward, uh, appreciate this motion. Um, and uh, again, just warn ourselves that um, as it relates to housing, we need to lead with urgency. Thank you. Mr. Cedillo. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. I um, just wanna add to this conversation, uh, Mr. O'Farro and, and both uh, Mr. Buscaino were, were noting that we have to, for whatever our vision, our vision has to be built on our on our reality and our current circumstances. That's that's the foundation, the platform for which we have to build. Uh, and so, uh, and particularly Mr. Buscaino, with, with the, as he said, the largest amount of what the old model was of. of public housing, but then we're building on that and we're making those changes. We look to emulate that in my district as well. Uh, but I wanna note also that that one of the things, and you've heard me say this both publicly and privately, um, it's a lament that I was raising before the pandemic uh, with the state government and their uh, extensive resources that they had before the pandemic, is we have to keep in mind that there was a History Matters, that there was a CRA, that there were and there exists uh, thousands of units that were under um, um, covenants and those covenants will be running out in the next five years and that will put 10,000 units uh, in jeopardy and so we have to look at uh, and I know Mr. Farrell knows this we have to keep people in the homes that they have now and so that this concept of social housing uh, it should include uh, addressing the concerns about expiring covenants. Uh, we need to think about that. Uh, I know my office, we've been working on one of the rare projects of eminent domain uh, in the city and in, its, in this uh, state and nation for it seems like two, maybe three years now. Uh, so it's not something that happens overnight. And we need to look at that process and to see are there ways in which we can make that process work um, better, both for tenants and for the building owners. Uh, so. Uh, again, I just want to add that to the list of the report back from the CAO and the CLA. I know that there are other specific report backs, but uh, all these things work together. And uh, I just want to add that because I don't want us to uh, go off and think that we're building a lot of new housing, but the problem solved. And then, you know, on the back end, there's another uh, 10,000 people who get pushed out of their, their uh, uh, dwelling. So uh, thank you, Madam President, for that. Mr. De Leon. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I want to associate my comments also to to uh, to all those individuals who just spoke. Um, uh, thank you, um, Councilmember uh, Mike Bonin, for introducing something that's uh, that's innovative. I think uh, all ideas, all concepts, uh, as innovative as they may be, have to be on the table. Uh, whether we build, whether we purchase. Uh, whether we use this new concept of social housing that um, uh, may be very popular and successful in other parts of, of the world. Um, we're not too big to borrow from other uh, regions, from other states, from other nations, which is really critical. Um, you know, uh, and I want to give credit where credit is due, you know, with, with uh, Council Member Bob Blumenfeld, we were having a conversation just recently. I know that when he was chair of the Budget Committee up in the Assembly, you know, then Assemblymember Bob Blumenfield, obviously through litigation, was a stalwart for CRA and, and knew the value of CRA for our local uh, governments, uh, not just in Los Angeles, but throughout um, the uh, state of California. But I just want to say one thing in particular uh, related to the council member from CD1, Gil Cedillo, which is the clock is ticking and there is a tsunami on the near horizon, which is January. 31st, 2020, when it is estimated that we may have at minimum a few hundred thousand individuals 
working class families who will be evicted from their apartments. That's not including those whose covenants are going to retire sometime soon. And it goes from a, 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 a subsidized rate, or I should say a rent control rate to a market rate. We're not even talking about those individuals. We're talking about individuals who uh, have fallen uh, victim to the shelter in place edict uh, and been have prohib prohibited from uh, earning a living and therefore paying their rent. Uh, remember, as, as I had mentioned sometime last week, uh, these individuals, Angelinos, are going to be expected, unless there is a deal that will be made by then, unless there's going to be a subsidy on behalf of the city and county and state of Los Angeles, because a new federal administration is not going to be able to react as quickly to the uh, imminent um, uh, expiration of the moratorium come January 31st. So it is real that we could possibly have hundreds of thousands of individuals who will be homeless come January 31st when that moratorium expires. And that's why I, I commend uh, all of my colleagues and their comments. I associate myself with their comments and to Mike Bayan for, for bringing any idea up that's on the table that we have to explore with a sense of urgency to make sure we can keep as many Angelinos as housed as possible. And obviously, to deal with the unhoused uh, community that we currently have uh, today. So thank you very much, um, Madam President, for the opportunity to share a few words. Thank you, Mr. De Leon. There are no other, no other uh, members on the queue. Madam Crooks, let's go ahead and prepare to vote on item 15. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Sidio. Sidio, aye. De Leon. Aye. Harris Dawson absent, correct? Aye. Kirk Horian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Weston absent. 13 ayes. This item is adopted. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, what's before us now? We're going to move on to. Um... Madam President, there are four verbal motions. Okay, why don't you go ahead and start with the first one? First one is a commendatory resolution introduced by Councilmember Cedillo congratulating William. Imperial on his 18 years of service to the City of Los Angeles and to extend best wishes for many years of good health and a long and happy retirement. Is there a second to this resolution? Second. Second by Mr. Blumenfield. Next. Next is another commendatory resolution introduced by Councilmember Cedillo congratulating Ralph Avila on his 33 years of service to the City of Los Angeles and to extend best wishes for many years of good health and a long and happy retirement. Is there a second to this resolution? Second. Second by Mr. O'Farrell. Next. The next verbal motion has been introduced by Council Member Cedillo. This is to be referred to the Health, Education, Neighborhood, Parks, and River Committee. And this instructs the CAO to identify funding to invest in modernizing the athletic field at Lincoln High School. And a seconder? Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Next. Thank you. The next is a resolution introduced by Council Member Cedillo to be referred to the Transportation Committee and this prohibits parking of oversized vehicles in CD1 on certain streets that have been detailed in the motion. And a seconder? Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Price. Thank you. Madam, oh, that completes all the motions the clerk has to read. All right, thank you, members. Any verbal motions, Ms. Rodriguez? 
Yes, thank you, Madam President. I have uh, three. Uh, to begin with the commendatory resolution, now therefore be it resolved that by adoption of this resolution that the City of Los Angeles, uh, the City Council, and the City Attorney hereby commends and congratulates Assistant City Attorney Deborah Gonzalez for her exemplary service to the City of Los Angeles and extends her best wishes for a happy and healthy retirement. Second. Second by Mr. O'Farrell. Next. And one second. And um, the motion uh, is, uh, I therefore move that the city, uh, I'm sorry, that the chief legislative analyst be directed to report to council with the steps necessary to create a new citywide assessment district uh, to generate funds for youth infrastructure and facility maintenance modeled after Proposition K program to begin prior to Prop K's expiration date in order to prevent a lapse in program funding. Second. Second by Mr. Blumenfield. Next, Ms. Rodriguez. Okay, and lastly, uh, I therefore move that the council instruct the city administrative officer with the assistance of the CLA to work with all departments that have received coronavirus relief funds to report to council in seven days with a summary of each department's CRF allocation, including programs implemented and associated costs, contracts ex executed, including scope of work, costs and contractors, uh, current expenditures and projected year end expenditures, and further move that the council instruct the CAO with the assistance of the CLA to report to council in seven days on the total amount of unallocated and estimated unexpended relief funds and provide recommendations on utilizing the remaining funds to be distributed equitably among economically challenged communities and prioritize funding for small business and family source center services. Second. Second by Mr. Kokorin. Any others, Ms. Rodriguez? That's it, thank you. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Madam President. I do have three. Um, my first one is, is again, our, our San, San Pedro Outdoor Dining Pilot Program. I, I mean, call me, I'll take you to lunch. You guys gotta take a look at these dining platforms in downtown San Pedro on me. Um, so I therefore move that the city administrative officer with the assistance of the Bureau of Engineering, Department of Transportation, and any other departments as needed, be directed to report with recommendations on a streamlined permanent outdoor dining policy with the ability to establish a zone in which multiple restaurants can opt in under one application slash permit, the creation of a guideline document, and ministerial approval process for outdoor dining platforms using the San Pedro Outdoor Dining Pilot Program as a guiding model. Second. Thank you. Second by Mr. O'Farro. Next, Mr. Buscano. Yes, this one is on the Granada Theater in Wilmington. I move that the matter of initiating consideration of the Granada Theater located at 632 um, North Avalon Boulevard in Wilmington as a city historic cultural monument as reported under council file number 14-1487, which expired per council policy CF 05-0553, be reactivated and that the matter be restored to its most recent legislative status um, as of the date of the, count, the file's expiration. Is there a second? Second. Second. Second by Mr. Gokorian. Thank you so much. And lastly, this is a reward motion for the unsolved murder of Joshua Johnson. Um, move that the city clerk be directed to cause notices and or advertisements to be duly published according to the requirements of Division 19, Chapter 12, Article 1 of the LA Admin Code and to thereby cause the offer of war become effective. Is there a second? $50, second. 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 Second by Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Madam President. Um, first, I have a motion to be seconded by Councilmember Blumenfield, and uh, uh, which I would like to uh, move forward as a Rule 16 
Uh, I move that the council action of May 27th, 2020, instructing the planning department with the assistance of the city attorney to prepare and present an emergency ordinance to eliminate financial and regulatory burdens on small businesses affected by the COVID-19 emergency declaration. Council file number 20-0380-S1 be amended to include language and the requested ordinance to temporarily authorize the planning department to approve the placement of on-site signage within the Ventura Coanga Boulevard Corridor specific plan and the Westwood Village specific plan during the COVID-19 pandemic crisis via administrative clearance. Mr. Blumenfield, can I get a confirmation? You're a second on this yes. motion. Seconding confirmed, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koretz, any others? Yes, uh, the next one I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, co-presenting with council member Cedillo. Uh, now therefore be it resolved by the Los Angeles City Council that on October 24th, 2020, it be recognized as Acupuncture Traditional Medicine Day and that the California Acupuncture Traditional Medicine Association be applauded for their ongoing work and leadership to create a strong united profession dedicated towards health and wellness for all. Second. Okay, thank you. Second by Mr. Cedillo. Any others, Mr. Koretz? Uh, 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 I, I think we have a, a, a miss here because uh, Mr. Cedillo is already co-presenting. So we need an additional. I'm suspect. happy to second that for you. Thank you. That's perfect. Um, and lastly, uh, therefore, be it resolved, and, and this will be uh, seconded by Mr. Buscaina. Now, therefore, be it resolved with the concurrence of the mayor that by the adoption of this resolution, the city of Los Angeles hereby includes in its 2021 2022 federal legislative program support for any legislation that defines domestic terrorism as a federal crime accompanied by appropriate penalties and sentences and seek to sponsor such legislation as well. Is there a second? Uh, I'll, com I'll confirm that second, thank you. Um, Mr. Buscaino is confirming a second on that motion. Any others, Mr. Koretz? Oh, no, that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other members, Madam Clerk, what's next? Motion, Council has motions for posting and referral. Posting and referred members, are there any announcements? Any adjourning motions? Mr. Koretz? Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to adjourn today in memory of Sarah Hayes. Sarah was taken from us a few weeks ago, much too soon by a stroke at the age of 66. She was a longtime resident of the Rancho Park Chevy Hills neighborhood often put herself out there for measures that she believed were good for her neighborhood and for our city. She always acted in a diplomatic but persistent way. Um, she would argue well thought out points, but was willing to listen to and consider other points of view and always work towards her goals for the community with utmost respect for others. Sarah believes in building a light rail line along the abandoned railroad right of way through the neighborhood. This was at a time when many community leaders in the area were opposed to the idea, and she not only joined an advocacy group, Friends for Expo, but worked very actively with her neighbor, Karen Le Leonard, and others over many years to show and build support from the community for what eventually became the Expo light rail line from downtown to Santa Monica. Once the Expo line was approved, Sarah was among the community members who actively worked to make sure that the project included native, native plant landscaping in portions of the Metro right of way adjacent to the line and also advocated for what she thought would be the best pedestrian and bicycle connections to the neighborhood stations. She was able to see also the completion of the Westwood Greenway Proposition O project surrounding the Expo Westwood station, which I'm glad to say started flowing in the final week, uh, just in time for her to see it in full operation. Sarah worked closely with my office and a steering committee who worked over many years to help make this project happen. She was among the most determined and driven community leaders, and we very much appreciated her leadership and tireless efforts. Sarah was a consummate environmentalist and drove an electric car before most others had even given it a thought. 
She had a magnificent native garden that served as a model for thousands of others as a reliable stop on the annual Theodore Payne Foundation tour. In short, she lived the way she advocated for a cleaner and healthier planet. Sarah Hayes will be missed by many, but her legacy will long be remembered by my staff and I, by her family, friends, neighbors, and by her community. May she rest in peace. Okay, thank you, Mr. Koretz. Mr. Cedillo? Madam Chair, thank you. I've had problems with this mouse this morning. Uh, I wanted to make an announcement, and I didn't want to cut off or interrupt Mr. Koretz as, as hard as I tried. Um, on Saturday, this goes under announcements, I want to invite everyone, all of you, to join me for this incredible uh, seventh annual Latin Jazz Music Festival. It's the seventh year. Uh, we didn't want to break tradition. Uh, you're all invited to a viewing party with me. Uh, those who can't make it can see it on Channel 35 from 5 to 7. Uh, those who are driving can listen to it on KPFK. And those who want to dial in on the internet can go to gilsadil.com. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, two hours of uh, entertainment. We're going to have uh, Gilbert Castellanos, straight ahead jazz with his Latin jazz uh, music ensemble. It's a great, it's a great, great performer from San Diego. Uh, he's going to be performing. And then we're going to have uh, Mongo Rama, which is a... Uh, homage to Mongo Santa Maria. You'll learn about the history of Latin jazz, where it began, uh, where it's played, how it's played. Uh, it's gonna be exciting, it's gonna be two hours. Obviously, I would love for all of us to be together at the uh, uh, park in uh, Northeast Los Angeles, but uh, we won't be able to do that this year, so we're gonna do it uh, responsibly, safely, but yet with the same uh, excitement, uh, the charanga, uh, with our seventh annual Latin Jazz Music Festival. 5 to 7, Saturday, KPFK, uh, Channel 35, and of course, always at keelsadio.com. Thank you. Thank you. Any other adjourning motions, members? If you see none, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you.